Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC hobby. In this video, I am working on the linkages and I wanted to do a little bit of a how-to. Um, I'm gonna be using these clevises on the servo arm. And as you can see, the holes on these arms are rather small. They need to be enlarged to the size of this, uh, of the clevis pin. And this is where having little twist bits like these come in very handy. They come in a, a very uh, broad number of sizes. There's another box in addition to these and a handful of uh, pouches that go down as low as, uh, I believe the l smallest one is like 0.1 millimeter. Uh, in any event, I have, uh, it's another good reason to have uh, one of these, a nice set of digital calipers. I measured out this pin and it measures out to uh, 1.5 millimeters. So I'm going to take the 1.5 millimeter bit and enlarge this. Now, lacking these tools, a lot of people would probably just take an X-Acto knife and, you know, auger out this hole until it's big enough to slide the pin through. Unfortunately, uh, you're going to get a hole that is shaped more like an hourglass uh, because of the uh, angle of the blade as opposed to getting a hole that is um, you know a tube uh, the same size at one end as the other end in the middle uh, so using these twist bits will yield the most precise connection between the clevis and the horn uh, and precision is what I'm going for with this. I want the best linkage possible. I want to avoid slack. Uh, that's why I'm using these horns um, for the aileron. Uh, they're a little big or bulky, one might say. It's almost a little overkill for this application, but uh, it's a ball joint inside a plastic horn and uh, when this bolt is tightened down, there's not going to be any uh, play forwards or backwards. Um, and yet it will provide good smooth motion. So um, that means that uh, the ailerons are always going to return to center. You want to avoid situations where you've got a, a dual center. Uh, you may have seen this on an airplane um, when the linkages aren't set up right, push rods, uh, where, for example, your stabilizer or rudder, when you give up elevator and release the stick, it returns to one position. When you give down elevator and release the stick, it returns to a different position. So you've got a variance of center. And that's something you want to avoid at all costs. Um, definitely want to avoid that with ailerons. Don't want the plane, you know, wanting to pitch to one side and then you correct and then it wants to pitch to the other side and you can never quite trim it out. Uh, so that's why I'm uh, using this uh, slightly higher grade hardware than one might use for a plane of this type. Always test linkages before you start drilling holes and anchoring horns in place. Um, for example, uh, I might decide this horn is a little tall and I want to might want to put a shorter one or switch to a horn that has uh, a couple of different holes so that I can uh, adjust the amount of throw. So what I've basically done is just use these two clamps to clamp this horn in place so I can test the range of motion with the a new servo mount. So let's start by giving full up elevator and that's pretty huge right there. And down aileron or full flap is is pretty massive. Now that's I could go further than this um, just by adjusting uh, removing some of that um, that up aileron uh, or actually that's <laughs> depending on uh, the direction left or left or right but let's just say uh, a negative flap okay uh, the this aileron surface moving 
up because the wing is upside down right now. So that already is really far, much further than it really needs to go. Probably only needs about this much travel uh, to provide uh, good, good action. So I could add that difference to this aileron and get you know, pretty close to, I'd say about 75 degrees. So, um, plus I could uh, adjust the center point um, and uh, I could dial up the throw a little bit, go to the maximum throw that the, uh, the servo will allow uh, in the transmitter setup. Um, so there's a variety of things I can do to, to get more flat, but that's already really, really good flap right there even if I made no other changes and that's got to be two and a half times to three times the amount of throw that the uh, the factory or stock setup offers with the uh, servos mounted inside the fuselage so uh, you know this is just an example of how you can set up a test rig um, uh, using the uh, servo tester and a couple of clamps to hold a horn in place. So always a good idea to, to check your rig, uh, especially when you're doing modifications. But even if you're building from stock, uh, you might want to switch horns, uh, change the length of the linkage, um, variety of things. Since the wing has such thin spars, I didn't want to drill holes and uh, try to run the wires through. Even if I took the connectors off, it still requires a, a decent sized hole. Uh, so the easiest way to go uh, that did the least amount of uh, damage to the wing was to just put little notches, as you can see one here. And on this side of the wing is already tack glued into place with a little bit of CA, just a drop does it. And then I can apply covering over this and the covering isn't gonna melt the insulation. It's not, uh, the iron doesn't get nearly hot enough. Uh, I needed to put on a couple of uh, short extensions. I decided to move the servos out uh, one rib further than I had planned. And I think it uh, was a good move from several points. Uh, number one, um, because of the location of this lightning hole, I wasn't gonna get a good uh, anchor point for the control horn and uh, if I did try to make it work it was going to have to be at an angle I wasn't going to have a straight line and that's not something you want to do when you're trying to get maximum throw uh, so as you can see uh, with this one the horn can be in a perfectly straight line and have a solid mounting position uh, on the aileron so that was worthwhile. And of course I needed to uncover one further so that I could get in with my fingers to uh, make sure I was getting good joints as I was uh, you know, holding these pieces together while I was gluing these. Uh, uh, these bars here are uh, plywood, um, 3 16 inch plywood, I believe. Yes. Um, and uh, notched a little bit to make uh, room for the arm to get full downswing. And I had started with spruce and after uh, pre-drilling some holes, the screw still started to split uh, the spruce. Uh, that is the one problem with spruce. It doesn't take well to uh, having screws drilled into it. It does tend to split and uh, plywood does much better for that. It's almost as light and um, it is definitely going to make for a stronger fit. These uh, pieces of balsa wood here are about one mil thick. It's just enough to make a little bit of a decking for, um, for covering. And uh, so as you can see, everything's coming together. I'll need to put uh, two pieces of wood. I may go from front to back or just put a tongue sticking out from the edge. Either way, uh, that will have a hole for this to protrude through and then covering to anchor onto. So 
these are going to be as close to the edge as possible so that the hole for the uh, they can drop into the fuselage um, so it's uh, proceeding well uh, no no real problems uh, nothing that was too hard to do this is definitely a modification that uh, um, anyone of moderate building experience let me put it this way if you can build the kit up to this point you can handle modifying the wing to have uh, outboard mounted servos instead of having the servos in the fuselage in similar fashion to the wing spars i just notched these two uh, thin and very light pieces of plywood uh, this is just some scrap plywood uh, from uh, previous uh, kit and it's very very light and so I just cut two pieces and uh, and then notched them and uh, glued them in place with five-minute epoxy and that'll make for a, uh, a nice level surface for covering and uh, there's enough surface there for the covering to, to attach and not, you know, have uh, ripples or, or anything around the hole where, um, where the cables come out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.